Hey y'all, here to do some martial sciences analysis on one of my favorite fighters in the game right now, and you can really say of all time. So I watched Big Bang, what a great name, uh, event from one championship, which is the kind of Asian version of the UFC. It's a UFC competitor. A lot of times when I am doing jujitsu or any striking and people who don't know are asking, they're like, oh, do you do UFC? It's become cliche. I'm not the only author to have talked about it before. And it's like, yeah, my real sport is fighting, is vale tudo. It's no holds bar. It's the real thing simulated as best as possible. What they call mixed martial arts or MMA is the closest thing to it. And my my big ethos is jujitsu as it's expressed by the Gracie family since 1925. That's Gracie jujitsu, but they didn't make that up. It's in a longer history back to the 1800s of judo and for thousands of years in Japanese jujitsu. So I'm part of a larger tradition. And of course, I, I had actually my most formative years, five years spent training in Taekwondo, which is Korean kickboxing. But in general, there is or there are promotions and events beyond the UFC. The UFC is not the sum total of combat sports, although probably right now it is the best out there. One championship has some very interesting fights based out of uh, Singapore. And Gary Tonin comes from my favorite camp, the camp of one John Dana Hare, who's now getting called Juan Dana Hare with a J instead of an H because him and the team as a result of the COVID-19 have moved to Puerto Rico with the Boricuas and the Boricuas. A very interesting move. I think the tropical climate, I think their partner Mo, who has run ADCC uh, very well, especially in the last time, the Abu Dhabi Combat Club and who runs his own private events with a lot of legends of the sport down in Florida, down in Puerto Rico, as well as in the, the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, places like Abu Dhabi, places like Dubai. I think that that is one of the big draws, right? But also I think a big draw is the fact that Peter Schiff pushed a lot on the Joe Rogan experience. And I know they watched the Joe Rogan experience. I know both John Danaher and Gary Tonin have been on the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, as a quick side note, for those of you who don't know John Dana here, he's the mind behind Farhas Zahabi and as well as George St. Pierre. So if you like George St. Pierre, GSP, if you like Farhas Zahabi over there in Montreal, Canada, then you should like John Dana here, who is the mind behind the jiu-jitsu and arguably the MMA that goes on there, although Farhas has a lot of his own innovations as well. So Peter Schiff pushed this point on the JRE that in Puerto Rico, it's a part of the United States, but it's kind of this colonial status. So you give up your right to vote. So if you don't care about voting, it doesn't matter. But what you gain is no federal income tax, which is amazing. So John Dana Hare's plan is to make all of his students legendary in the sport of jujitsu and all of them superstars and rich and to then enrich everyone else who participates in the sport. Uh, he's reluctantly permitted, uh, is a loose word, Gary Tonin to enter MMA. It was really Gary Tonin demanding it, and John Dana Hare just being like, all right, I guess that's what's going to happen. But anyway, you have the flag of the Dana Hare death squad being carried by Gary Tonin in MMA, and so far he was undefeated. I believe he was 5-0 and o before this match with Koyomi Matsushima, who has a background in judo, uh, which I said is related to jiu-jitsu, a background in wrestling, a background in karate, as well as recently getting some private lessons from one Imanari, who's had his own battles with the squad in jiu-jitsu, but who has a lasting effect on jiu-jitsu and MMA with the Imanari role, which is a nice technique to roll underneath your opponent and get a leg lock. Obviously, it's a lot harder to do when soccer kicks are allowed, like the good old days in Pride. And we'll get back to Pride. But it is interesting that he was giving some private lessons to Gary Tonin's opponent, Koyomi Matsushima. Ultimately, Gary Tonin won through unanimous decision. It was a three-round, five-minute-per-round fight. 
as I said, I love Vale Tulo No Holds Bar. And one of the beefs that I have with rounds is, we'll get into it, it's artificial. It's an artificial resurrection or retry or try again for the person who's less skilled at grappling. In this case, arguably, that is Koyomi Matsushima because Gary Tonin is a specialist of submission grappling who dabbles in striking and he's getting better and better every time we see him out, but he's still a specialist in grappling. So I think at a bare minimum, the rounds could be changed to get back into the position that the person was last in, but maybe making it slightly less deadly. So if someone has a seatbelt, maybe at least give them the back, but they start again back on their feet, which is super artificial. And I don't like another thing you could do that pride used to do. And that Ryzen does is have longer rounds. So you say 15 minutes is all the attention span that sports, um, fans have nowadays okay fine keep the 15 minutes instead of doing three five minute rounds do one 10 minute round and one five minute round and make the 10 minute round first or do one 15 minute round no breaks in between you're actually saving time you could use that time for commercials or to relax and go home in either of, of those events i think gary tonin would have submitted his opponent what we saw from matsushima was an incredible ability to survive in the first round gary tonin avoided the critical hits of striking that were going to be presented by a very cautious and hesitant but still striking matsushima and he takes him to the ground takes his back remember this guy is trained in judo and wrestling so that was impressive for gary tonin to do it and for three minutes he proceeds to try to get his mata leao his lion killer from which he gets his name or the rear naked choke or the rear naked strangle, however you want to call that move. And you got to take your hat off, give a little hat tip to Matsushima. He survived. The number one rule of submission grappling is to defend. The second rule is to escape. He wasn't able to escape, but the bell rung, the round ended. And so he was able to escape given the rules and the format. And you can say that he built his strategy and tactics off of that, which is a legitimate argument. Second round happens very similarly. Gary Tonin gets to the back, tries his best to submit Matsushima. Matsushima has impeccable, impenetrable defense. Several moments, it looks like Gary Tonin is going to strangle him out. It doesn't happen. Finally, you get to the third round and, uh, excuse me, uh, at the end of the second round with about 15, 14 seconds left, Matsushima actually gets on top and lands one punch to Gary Tonin's face and one knee while Gary Tonin is on bottom on the ground and Matsushima is on top also on the ground. What's fascinating about this is that in the UFC and in other promotions, you cannot knee a downed opponent to the face. In fact, there are weird rules where sometimes if you have one hand or two hands, like sometimes it's permitted, sometimes it's not, it's left uh, some weird rules to be followed. But one championship actually allows you to knee a downed opponent. You just can't soccer kick them. You can't kick them uh, with your foot when they're down there. It's interesting, it's arbitrary, but you know, each each thing, each promotion has its own rule set. So anyway, he got those two licks in, the round ends. Round three, pretty much they're on their feet the whole time. Uh, again, Matsushima is surviving. Gary Tonin is also surviving. I was worried he might get knocked out, but he was also surviving being cautious. They cautiously strike each other. The ref tells them action a couple times because they're again, they're both... They're both just really great at defense and the offense of each side was not enough to overcome the defense of each side. And Matsushima wasn't really going for it. He's just surviving and Gary Tonin's being cautious, although he went for a uh, kind of an MNR role of his own, but a, a leg lock move of his own. But Matsushima was able to defend it probably because of the learned private training sessions he had with MNR. And uh, finally, Gary Tonin kind of ends the match with getting one lick with a punch of his own from the standing from his feet and one kind of quick tie clinch or plume knee to the face as well. And he wins a decision match. A lot of people think decision matches are boring. 
I kind of agree at the same time, there was a lot of strategy, a lot of tactics. And what we saw was defense and escaping and quick strikes in and out from the both of them. And uh, we saw that Gary Tonin, his uh, 100% finish rate was tarnished, but he's winning and winning. And he had uh, so many theatrics. He had a nice handlebar mustache, which was commented on by the commentariat. He had a nice mullet. He represented America. He had a unique flag. It wasn't quite an American flag. I don't know what it was. He had a unique flag too. When he was getting interviewed after his unanimous decision victory, he started off with a poem before calling out the current champ. So overall, it was an amazing match. And one championship is great because if you download their app, you can watch the fights for free. So I encourage you to go and check out the fight if you haven't and support jujitsu every time its flag is waved in any form of combat sports. Thank you for listening and hope you enjoyed my analysis.